Welcome back everyone to another Hot Toys review and this time we're going to be reviewing the quarter scale Iron Man Mark III figure from Iron Man 1. So I've been kind of putting off this review because this is just such a massive figure. It's like how do I film this? So I'm going to just do the best I can and uh, with what I have so let's just get into it. So the box is quite amazing. I mean the metallic finish on the paintwork of the box looks amazing. I love how the core scale figures always have these 3D effects on them. Um, they always have like a 3D uh, head and then the 3D core scale logo. Uh, massive box, as you would expect with the quarter scale figure compared to all the 1 6 scale Hot Toys figures that I've reviewed before. Uh, but yeah, I just love this metallic shine that the box has. Alright, so opening up the box, you take this out and then you push. And pull this part out. All right, so here's a first look at the outer part of the box. This part comes separately off, and you have a foam storage for this figure. So as you can see, I didn't change it back to the original way it looked. And then you take this foam part out. If you get the deluxe version, and you have more accessories on the bottom section. So like I said, this is a massive figure. I'm barely able to fit this all on the table. But yeah, I love it because this figure comes with a surprising amount of accessories despite being a core scale figure. You wouldn't expect a figure of this size to come with much, but this is the deluxe version. And actually the only reason I got the deluxe version was because the original version sold out by the time I was gonna pick it up. So I was like, well, I guess I have no choice. I'll get the deluxe and pay a little bit extra money. I guess we could start with what many people won't probably see first, which is the unmasked head sculpt of Tony Stark, played by Robert Downey Jr. in Iron Man 1. Yeah, as you can see, if you have the lighting right, this head sculpt looks pretty cool. It looks pretty much like uh, Robert Downey Jr. from Iron Man 1. So you get the lighting just right here. So you can see a lot of different skin texture from different angles. And you have scars with blood and stuff like that that looks pretty realistic on the nose, the cheek, and the forehead, and the lip there. Um, I think the eyes look very realistic, amazing as always. The wrinkles and age and skin texture and paintwork details all make this look very realistic. And at a quarter scale, you can get a lot finer details in this. Of course, with the helmet itself, you have a really nice metallic finish. You even have some details on the inside of what the inside of the helmet kind of looks like. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I think this looks like Tony Stark from Iron Man 1. I don't really have too many complaints about it. I just think you have to get the lighting just right to make it look spot on. You have this faceplate. So you have a battle damage faceplate, which is an extra one you can put on the unmasked head sculpt or the masked head sculpt with that lights up. And so you have some damage marks on here, some scrapes and scratches. You have translucent eyepieces, which is a nice touch. You have what looks like rivets here that look quite metallic and realistic. What's so cool, the extra work they put and details they put on the inside of the faceplate, it's just awesome. I love how they did that. And you have two magnets as you can see here. And you have magnets in here somewhere that attaches like so to make it look like he has the faceplate up. And you can have it to where he has the faceplate down. So this basically be the helmet that does not light up. So if you want a helmet that looks like it's just malfunctioning or off, this is the one to use. You can take the other cleaner faceplate, which looks like this. And it has the same details on the inside and magnets. And you can have this one as a variant for the unmasked head sculpt. And you can put it down like so. You also have some switch out pieces, so you can switch out the chest piece, which I'll show later with this battle damaged chest piece. You have a translucent center piece here, and a ring that looks very metallic. And you have bullet hole marks, and well not bullet hole, but bullet dents, and scratches, and stuff from battles. I think it looks really great. No details on the inside, which I guess you don't really need. Uh, but yeah, I think it looks pretty good uh, in terms of the sculpt work. I think the paintwork maybe could be a little bit darker. There could be a little bit more contrast. That's my only complaint. But other than that, I think it looks great. And same thing for the shoulder pieces, the right and the left. They actually did a really cool job here, and they printed an L and an R for right and left so you know which is which. They just snap on and off. I'll show that later. But yeah, you have scratch marks, scuff marks, and a lot of stuff. 
and some bullet dents. Um, I keep wanting to say bullet holes, but technically not. Um, and it looks like a missile strike or something like that there. Some scrapes and scuffs. And so yeah, you could put those on the shoulders and I think it's awesome. Uh, but again, I, I wish there was a little bit more contrast. I feel like the black is maybe a little bit too light. Maybe that's for photography reasons. But I wish it was a little bit darker. You have two open hands, like repulsor hand, blast hands, which um, are see-through, I believe. So, so the light should shine through these um, when you have the light functions on, which I will also demonstrate later. Uh, but yeah, you have some nice subtle scratches on these hands here. These are basically just stiff, kind of like statue hands, I, I would call them. And then these hands, the coolest thing about these, with a lot of Iron Man hands, is they are actually articulated. So you can articulate each of the fingers, including the thumbs. So you have a ball joint here, and just a standard joint for the finger. And yes, these also light up as well. So yeah, all the fingers are articulated. And the these are just standard joints. Uh, they don't, they're not, this is kind of a ball joint, but it doesn't move that much. And the same for this hand. You can basically just pose them in any, any which way you want. Like if you want them to be like Spider-Man. And there you go. And in terms of the diorama piece, you have the Ironmonger arm. So this is a massive diorama piece, which you would expect because it's to quarter scale. And you have some nice texturing work. Unfortunately, it doesn't light up. That would have been awesome. Our little translucent piece would have been cool. And it'd be cool if these uh, fingers actually articulated and this articulated as well. But it's just basically a statue-like piece. But the paintwork is amazing. Looks very metallic and great. This piece actually snaps in at the bottom right here. So you can have it attached. It doesn't really stay very well. So I tend to kind of leave it. I mean, it stays on, but... In terms of getting this to stay up at a level uh, spot, it's kind of difficult. You put some batteries in here, and in this compartment right here, and as you can see, there's a lot of details on the side. There's gears and different parts of Ironmonger's costume. So when you uh, Ironmonger suit, I should say. So when you turn on this switch, you have light up functions on the bottom, and the arc reactor of Ironmonger's chest piece lights up, and it looks pretty amazing and of course this part lights up as well the floor to simulate the final battle and you have some really cool paintwork um, that makes it look you know rugged and dirty so that's pretty nice and again the paintwork on the side makes it look like it's made of real metal rusty you have to give it to Hot Toys for always having great paintwork on their accessories and diorama pieces and this piece also is just a standard plastic piece there's not a ton of paint work on this one compared to the diorama itself and you just snap that in either three of these holes here so you can, it's optional you can turn it whichever way you want and so yeah that's what that looks like and then you also have the standard display piece which comes with the standard version the non-deluxe version and you have a nice metal grate, grated floor here. You have some nice uh, weathering effects on this grated floor here to make it look like it's made of real metal. Rust and just scrapes and stuff like that. I think it looks great. It reminds me of Star Wars. And you just have a standard, kind of a different style of hook stand which you can tighten um, with a screw here. This is kind of flimsy. I almost don't trust it for a quarter scale figure. I do like, of course, as you predict, is a metal nameplate. I wish more figures had this. Really awesome. Yeah, just a standard stand, not much else to it. And here we have the Iron Man figure himself in full form. Here's a quick look at the front, and then the side, and the back. So like I said, this is a massive figure. Kind of hard to figure out a way to film this. So I think this figure looks amazing has a really nice metallic finish looks incredibly realistic especially under the right lighting conditions it basically looks like it took Iron Man right out of the movie no doubt about it I don't know how Hot Toys gets the plastic pieces which this is all made of plastic no die cast to look so metallic 
unrealistic. It's just so accurate to how it looks in the movie, and I'm very impressed. So let's take a closer look at the figure. So taking a look at this figure in more detail, starting with the head, and the light up feature, you just take this magnet piece face plate off, you turn the switch on, and then you have the light up eyes. So starting with the head while it's lit up, as you can see it looks very photorealistic. You have a lot of details on all sides. I am very impressed with the way this looks, especially when you have the light lit up, it makes it look very realistic, just like it did in the movie. Um, so I'm going to mix articulation with showing the details of this figure, so you can actually move the head up quite a bit, like so, and you can move the head down about that far, and side to side a little bit, but not too much, and you can make them look down at an angle and you can make them look up at an angle. My only complaint is the neck, for some reason on mine is loose, so it'll start to fall down on its own after a while, at a certain point. Uh, but other than that, it's great. So as you can see, the chest has a nice metallic look to it. The shoulders are articulated. I should say shoulder pads. The cool thing about this chest piece is it comes off. So it's a magnet mixed with uh, hooking on in these holes here. And so let me go ahead and show you all the light up function. So you get the light up function, you basically take this back part off here and you can do two different versions. So this way you have both lights light up, which is in the ribs, the arc reactor, and near the shoulders. With this light up function, you just have the arc reactor light up only. I prefer to do all of the lights lit up. And so then you just snap this piece back and then like so and these lights actually light up too so while I'm on the back here you have the flaps on the back which are actually articulated so you have a hinge on this part right here and this part with the light and you have details on the underside which is awesome and then you can also move this flap up as well so you can have it up like this as if he's in flight mode or kind of like make it look like attack mode. If you do that for both, you can have a really cool effect. As you can see here. You can also move these flaps up, which they're a bit trickier to get up. And they also have details on the inside. They're a bit stiffer and they feel kind of flimsy like they might break. But yeah, it looks really cool. It looks like he's attacking or landing and stuff like that. So I think it's a really nice a feature. And so yeah, you have a lot of details on the back here. Just like in the movie. Each of these pieces are separate, uh, so you can bend him, which I was shocked by. I had no idea. I thought these would all be one molded piece, but no, Hot Toys goes above and beyond. Even with this part right here, it is a separate piece. I would be kind of careful, it might break, but it, so far, I mean, it is pretty flexible, so you can bend it uh, forward about that far in terms of the chest and stomach areas. So the front stomach parts are also separate pieces that all move, which is awesome. I think that's just amazing the way they designed that, so you can actually turn them a little bit too, which is really awesome. I did not expect that um, at all chest piece here when you have the chest part off you have a lot of nice details on there which looks awesome and you can kind of see the gears on the inside there for the arm which is really cool which moves so this gear part actually moves kind of hard to see in the shoulder but then the ball joint also moves as well um, on the shoulder and so these actually have a spring in them, they lift up slightly, so you can have more articulation in the shoulders. Like so, so you can go up about that far, and they can go forward about like that, but I wouldn't push it too much. And you can go back pretty far, actually. You can basically do a 360 with the arm if you're careful enough. And then in terms of functionality, you have this 
a shoulder piece which goes forward. So then you can bring the missiles up like so. It's just attached by a clear piece for some reason. And yeah, you can just pose it like so on both sides of the figure. So you move that forward like so. And then you can just push the missile piece back down and bring the shoulder piece back up on either side. Each of these rib pieces are can articulate. So the rib armor, just like in the movie, is flexible and you can move them out slightly. They're really tight fitting, so I'd be careful not to break them. But some of them can move out pretty far. So see, this one can go out that far. And then this one. So you can have that nice effect that he had in the movie. And that works the same on both sides. So to light up the hands, you actually take this part off, which has cool intricate details on the inside there. And then you take this part off as well, which is attached by uh, pegs and then the other part with the magnet. And then you flip that switch on. And the same for this side. Um, as you can see, the hands light up when you have the right hands in place. So that's a really cool feature because they're translucent. So you actually have the light that goes through the arm, which actually is emitting through the joint. This piece doesn't move. It's a solid piece. But the hand on the ball joint does articulate quite nicely. And so when you have them like that, it looks pretty amazing. Here's what it looks like with the uh, Battle Damage chest piece on. And it snaps right on with the magnet, stays in place. As you can see, it looks not bad. If you swap out the face plate with the uh, Battle Damage face plate, and you have a nice matched look. Now, one thing I will say, it doesn't blend in the most realistic way. It's certainly cool that they included, but it's not the most well blended piece. And they can also swap out those shoulder pieces as well. And they snap on just like so. And that's how it looks with all the battle damage pieces. And then switching back to normal. And here he is back to normal form. And then moving on to a feature on the arms, which I think is really well engineered and well designed. You can actually do this for both arms. So what you do here is you can wiggle this out and pop it up. And then these articulate outwards like so. And you can move it up like that. And you have details on the inside here. This part comes out like so. So does this part. And so you can barely see it, but there's two missiles in here, and they're a bit tricky to get out. That's my one complaint. It's really awesome, but really tricky. Then you can pull the missiles out, and then have them in their launch sequence. And just like he did when he shot the tank in the movie, you can have them out, and then kind of just articulate it in a certain way to have him look like he's shooting the missiles outward looks really cool or you can have the effect of him having the shield when he was shielding himself against the bullets um, using this piece and if you articulate it a certain way you can have him doing that as well and as you can see there's actually lights in here in addition to the lights on the hands and like I said this function is available on both arms here and so then you just fold it all back in place like so you push the missiles back down And you fold these back and they snap back like so and these articulate back and it snaps back in place and you kind of have to mess with it a little bit to get it to snap just right and then there you have it I did show the articulation of the shoulder it goes 360 and in terms of the elbow, you can bend it 
pretty far forward like so and we can build the elbow back straight and what's cool is that this elbow pad here elbow armor is actually articulated as well and so that's a nice touch and so then moving on downward uh, these hip pieces are articulated and can actually go up pretty far they're a bit fragile so i'd be careful i think one of them actually broke off on me and then this part actually comes out and deploy like when you deploy the flares and they can deploy on both sides about that far they don't spin or anything they just pop out like so and back in um oh yeah and these are articulated as well surprisingly so that's pretty cool so you can actually pull this down so they can get more articulation for the hip area like so and back this is uh comes up a little bit it's like a spring and then of course you have all the fine details here you have slight wear and tear scratches and scuffs and then the knees actually are ratcheted and double jointed and again you have more scuff marks on the knees on both sides this is slightly flexible here these can articulate up and down interestingly enough on the feet they have more articulation than you would expect so this can actually go up like that and down about that far and you can move the feet up about that far you have details on the bottom and you can move the feet down about that much this also is articulated slightly so yeah this can go up pretty far and then this is actually a spring so you can move this up or down on both sides and it will stay in place because it's a spring now on the back here normally those uh, pieces would be on the back i'll bring those back in a bit but so this is where you put the batteries in for the feet and then you turn this switch on on both sides so with these attached back on here you can actually articulate this outward like so and you have the light effects which gives it a really cool effect like he's flying you have to push this down to get it to go up so i have to push that forward and push that down and like so you can articulate this more although it kind of comes off easily so you got to be careful about it but as you can see you have more details on the inside which are lit up and it looks great that's really awesome but like i said these fall off really easily so it's kind of a pain um, but you can articulate them quite well you have like double articulation so this part articulates and you have details hydraulics and stuff like that do you have the r for right so you know which is which what you could do is you could articulate all the way up like so and show the hydraulics underneath and then you could see these underneath on this side and then what you would do is you would just place them back down like so so i think that's really an awesome feature the fact that it actually has functionality and various parts that you wouldn't expect and now to take a look at what the figure looks like with the unmasked head sculpt and here's the figure with the unmasked head sculpt so as you can see this is what it looks like with the unmasked head sculpt and the suit of armor so it looks pretty cool So in terms of my overall thoughts of this figure, this is one of my favorite Hot Toys figures that I have in my collection right now. Um, I really have to say I'm just overall blown away and highly impressed with the amount of articulation in this figure. I, when I saw pictures of this figure, you know, I thought it looked great. I was like, wow, this looks photo real. This really does look like Iron Man, like he did in the movie. It looks like they just brought him right off the screen. Even though it's not die cast, the paint work is so well done and so well crafted that it looks like it's made of real metal especially when you have the lighting it just looks amazing very dynamic almost from every angle it has a very metallic 
realistic photorealism look to it and I'm just blown away by that. So that's why this is one of my favorite figures that I have in the collection so far. I didn't expect, you know, looking at photos, you don't, we wouldn't really know. I didn't expect it, you know, being a robotic, armor, bulky kind of design. The last thing I expected was this figure to have so much articulation. And only that, but so much functionality. I already knew about the arm functions that they could fold out into the shields and the missiles could pop out. And the missiles and the shoulders and the flaps and the wing flaps and flight suit stuff. Like, oh, that's all shown in the photos and everything, right? And I figured, you know, the elbows would move a little bit and the knees. But I did not expect the feet to be articulated the way they are. All the different suit functions to be articulated specifically with the pop out hip pieces the elbow armor how it can articulate and the way that the feet can move up and down and there's a spring in the armor of the feet that can move up and slide flaps that can go up and articulate more than you would expect them to but the biggest articulation surprise for me was the stomach and the back i did not expect that. i thought those were solid pieces looking at the photos i had no idea that those are multiple separate segments that can actually move above and around each other. So you can actually turn the figure and make the figure bend forward or back. Like that was really impressive the way they engineered and designed that. I, I can't imagine that was very easy and that's why that's one of the things that really puts this figure on the top for me. In terms of other positives, I love how the hands light up. I didn't expect that. I like how the fingers can articulate. I like all of the functions of this overall suit, whether it's the muscles in the shoulders or the arm. All the light up features are great, as well as the two options in the chest piece, which you can do more lights or less lights. The wing flaps being functional. The unmasked head sculpt is definitely a bonus. And the fact that you can get a version that comes with the iron monger arm and a great light up diorama piece i think that's amazing and i like the battle damage swap out pieces it's a nice bonus they didn't have to include but they did i think the head sculpt is a positive and that it looks like tony stark does from the movie i also like if we're going to get real specific how there is actually details under the chest piece and details under the wing flaps and of course under the back of the legs when those pieces can articulate back when he's in flight mode. That's really impressive going above and beyond. So that's definitely a huge positive for me. The metallic look, it really does have the metallic shine. It looks like it's made of real metal, even though it's plastic, which kind of transitions nicely to the negatives. In terms of the negatives, the only one, there's a, there's a few I can think of. So like right off the bat, I, you know what I'm probably gonna say, uh, I wish it was die cast. I think that would be amazing. I can't imagine how much more expensive it would be if it was die cast, but wow, wouldn't that be one of the best Iron Man figures released, if you ask me. I know people like the later suit designs, like the Mark V and so on and so on. I don't know, for me it's the classics. I like the original looks for characters, the basic, kind of simplistic. Even, I would even argue, more grounded approaches to the costume designs. You know, like, I, like in the Captain America review, I like the first costume more because it looks more realistic. It's not too over-exaggerated. It's not too complicated. And that's why I like this version so much, because it's not too complicated. It's just in that realm of believability, and that's what sells it for me. And so yeah, I think it would be great if it was die-cast. It would be my number one Iron Man figure if it was. But even if though it's not die-cast, it still looks great and looks like it's made of metal, so you really can't tell the difference if you ask me. Other negatives, I would say it's a little bit fragile in some areas, which you know, how much you can really fix that, I don't know, maybe more die cast pieces on the joints. Like maybe if the joints are made of metal, you would have a little bit more durability. I feel like I'm going to break this figure every time I'm handling it and when I'm posing it. So I always feel like I have to be really careful. And I did break this figure on one part I had to glue back. So that can happen. So it's kind of a, kind of a negative for the price you're paying for this. But it's also kind of understandable because there's only so many ways you can engineer a figure like this. The only I can't really think of any other negatives really off the top of my head. I mean, maybe there could have been, I don't know, some other accessories. I'm not really sure what. I feel like I say it on every review. The fact that I can't think of any other accessories tells me that this probably comes with enough as it is. And you wouldn't expect much with an Iron Man figure anyways. If I had to come up with another accessory, just thinking about the Batman quarter scale figure, it'd be cool if they had maybe an Iron Monger helmet that was broken off, or maybe even the Mark I helmet that was broken off. Like that would be really cool. Uh, sunglasses for the Iron Man uh, head sculpt. Although it'd be kind of even, you kind of have to do a completely unmasked head sculpt with none of the outer part of it, which, hey, I would say throw that in there too. That'd be awesome. That reminds me of one of the negative. I would say the, Battle damage swap out pieces are definitely a bonus and a positive. Negative with that though is that they don't blend well with the suit. With the rest of the suit it just seems kind of off and there's not much contrast on those pieces so it doesn't quite look as realistic as I was hoping they would. still think it's a great bonus but yeah it just it just doesn't blend in well with the rest of the figure unfortunately. 
This is definitely in my top three because of how much functionality, details, and realism this figure has, especially with the articulation. And as far as my collection goes so far, this is definitely in my top three. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and until the next video.